to do every day. So, write down what you got to do. Always. Uh, you find that you kind of push those to the next day. <laughs> Usually. Nothing really gets done. Uh, the first poem we're going to read is called Eventually. And this is kind of about the whole idea of making to-do lists and kind of they always are pushed back to the next day. So it's called Eventually. He tells himself it will start tomorrow. A new strictness in the beginning of truth. Everything that happens will be from now on. The past will be easily forgiven. He will take what he needs to survive and discard the rest, revising and abridging till he extracts the essence. The gnarled pine tree, the leaf-covered path in the backyard of his childhood. The failed attempts of love. The late night of dreaming and thunder and lightning. The best friends that he hasn't talked to in years. The scripts of how he will act if he had another chance. He refuses to carry the what-ifs and the might-have-beens. They have grown too heavy. Layer upon layer of revisited hope and disappointment. Tomorrow, he will cut off the crust of life's bread and keep the tender center that is underneath. <laughs> this is kind of about, I'm not, it doesn't apply just to breaking up with your girlfriend, but if you ever felt you're in a room and you just feel completely empty of emotion, you know, like, you just kind of feel lost. So this is mandatory gifts. He gives away his emptiness until the room around him is full. The objects take on a heaviness as he attempts to assimilate his feelings. The indifference removes the reservations and guilt. He is the melancholy chair. He is the abandoned sweater hanging on the knob, the shameful half-open closet door, and the disheveled, unkept bed. But not the mirror. He stays away from the honesty and the potential. Doesn't even attempt to ascribe emotion to the window. A scene of radiant autumn, yellows, reds, and orange. A chilling wind blows in, forcing the reluctant curtains into dancing. Thank you. 